Back to behind the headlines, thousands of adults have aged out of Missouri's foster care system. And if you ask the bureaucrats in charge of it, too many children have been staying too long in the system. Lucretia Wembley is with the St. Louis Public Radio Station and recently reported on this and found that the state is still struggling with essential services for all of this. Lucretia, welcome. Very glad to have you. Hi, Steve. Happy to be here. Okay. First, how many kids are in foster care right now and why and who are they living with? Sure. So um, I'll just give you a snapshot. Mm -hmm. So right now there are currently about 11,800 kids in the foster system here in Missouri, and that's roughly speaking. Um, and that's compared to uh, more than 14,000 kids who were in the foster system at the end of 21. So that number has gone down. Um, and so just to give a, a, like I said, a snapshot of Again, uh, there are about 5,000 of those total kids, of the 11,800 kids who are currently in the foster system. About 5,000 of that number uh, of kids are roughly staying with their grandparents. Some are with other relatives. Others are placed in non-family homes. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, according to the Children's Division Director, Daryl Missy, he says that about three kids were staying in hotels at the end of June. Uh, and so they were awaiting placement. And so he said that number is typically not super high, but mm -hmm. last by, at the end of June, at least there were three kids in hotels. When they talk about essential services, what are essential services when it relates to the foster care system? Sure, there, there is a lot of uh, essential services, a plethora of things that the uh, state, the uh, Department of Children's Services provides. Uh, and that, and this is, uh, serv these are services that they provide for foster parents, foster families, as well as the foster child. Uh, and these services include like counseling, uh, social worker visits, um, identifying support and services available in the community to help families, uh, uh, helping develop and support uh, mentor networks uh, and role models for the kids that are being placed in these homes, as well as uh, providing other uh, services and connecting parents, uh, foster parents and families with uh, groups and networks that will help provide them with resources, uh, like mm -hmm. providing for the kids uh, schooling and, you know, clothing and all the, all the things that you need mm -hmm. to, you know, take care of a child. Sure. So what happens to kids that are on the run? And this does happen every day. What does the state do to find them? And is that also complicated? Sure. It's, it's complicated because uh, from what I'm told, uh, they can't control uh, whether or not a kid decides to run away, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm told that there's nearly 100 kids who are on the run every day, which is, like, which is a problem. Um, but some of the kids missing are over 18 years old, and the department is, but the, and the department is still responsible for those kids uh, legally because the, the, the state still has custody of, of them until they're 21. Um, but uh, according to, like I said, di uh, Director Missy, he says that some of those kids who will run away are not the same kid. So they'll find one kid and then uh, <laughs> Another kid will be on the run, so so th so that that's why it's complicated. Like I said, you can't they can't control. Nobody can control when a child decides to run away. But they're working with um, what's called the state technical assistance team, and this is um, uh, a group that is within uh, the Department of Social Services uh, Children's Division, and and that team is specifically responsible for like locating these kids and finding them. But it's like it fluctuates mm -hmm. from what I'm told. In these runaway cases, is it because they're an abusive situation, but also because the court has no option to send them back? Sure. So I'm hesitant to say that that's the sole reason that kids mm -hmm. run away, uh, mm -hmm. because there are, there are certainly a plethora of reasons, but that definitely plays a part. Uh, one woman I spoke with for the, the foster care story that I wrote, her name is Trisha Gordon, and she works at the Foster and Adoptive Care Coalition now, but she spent 10 mm -hmm. years in the foster system uh, here in Missouri, um, and she shared how she struggles with adjusting to being a foster mom at first. Uh, not foster mom, but she struggled with adjusting to her foster mom's home when she was... Uh, mm -hmm. Um, first put into the foster system at 11 years old, but she had endured a lot of abuse uh, from the time she was in her mother's womb up until uh, she was placed in the foster system for uh, 10 years. And so getting into um, a more stable home environment with her foster parents was adjust, uh, not adjust, but was tough to adjust to, um, according to what she told me. Um, and she ran away. <laughs> uh, she ran away a few times when she first got into her foster mom's home. And so I shared that as just as an example, just from that you know, that testimony from Trisha um, that, you know, there's there's a plethora of reasons why kids choose to run away. And, you know, I can't just say uh, that it's just because of, you know, they're coming from abusive situations or are in abusive situations, but certainly that definitely plays a part.
It is the reality. Okay. So what are Missouri lawmakers doing anything to help resolve these issues? Is there anything in the works uh, next time they're in session? Uh, sure, there's a lot that they're working on right now. One thing that I will tell you, I didn't cover a lot of this in my reporting. Uh, my colleague, Jason Rosenbaum, uh, mm -hmm. um, covers, has really in-depth, um, excellent reporting that looks into what uh, uh, what is going haywire within the children's <laughs> division mm -hmm. uh, in the children's welfare system here in Missouri. But I will say, though, uh, just pointing to some of his reporting, mm -hmm. that Republican Congressman uh, Jason Smith is teaming up with the Wisconsin Democrats to like make sure that child welfare agencies aren't breaking up families uh, that are living in impoverished conditions. Because we there are a lot of families coming from uh, that are in these different situations. Sometimes the, the situations at home aren't the best. Uh, but it's not necessarily the, the parents or the, the family's fault. It's just they're living in poverty. And so kids have to be taken out of those situations, unfortunately. So we, have, we do have legislation uh, that is being brought forth, uh, or mm -hmm. in the works, rather, to make sure that there are more safety mechanisms in place uh, to make sure that we're, you know, not just, we're not penalizing mm -hmm. families for their situation or for them being in living in poverty, but that we're making sure that we're taking care of these families and, and keeping them together and providing them with resources. So, And Lucretia, in your report, you highlight a group called Respond, which is based in St. Louis that encourages adoption. Are they having some success with this? Sure. So the program Respond was founded, uh, uh, is currently run by the Foster and Adoptive Care Coalition, okay. and it was revamped last year. Uh, and foster, foster care advocates say that they saw a need to restart the program uh, because there's always been disparities in the numbers uh, here in St. Louis. Uh, disparities among, uh, disparities meaning there's been uh, more black kids in foster care than there are black families fostering them. Uh, I believe that, so they have been having some success from what they tell me. Uh, at the moment, there's about 70% of foster kids are black here in St. Louis, uh, and mm -hmm. only uh, and previously last year was about seven, uh, thirteen percent of foster parents uh, were African American or black. Um, but now that number has jumped from thirteen to seventeen percent, uh, and this is from the uh, Respond program. And so they they have been having some success. I'm I'm told. So uh, to ask that another way, then they are being able to break down barriers or walk or work around, so to speak, uh, some of the racial barriers with adoption agencies. Then. Yeah, so um, what they're doing right now is mainly focusing on recruiting, educating, um, and helping black families uh, get their foster care license and teaching them step by step what the process of adopting is. Uh, at the moment, I don't, uh, I can't say or speak to them actually working around racial barriers <laughs> because it's hard to pinpoint uh, what are racial like what are the racial barriers uh, from mm -hmm. adoption agencies? These are some of the things that are kind of like unspoken. Um, but I will say though uh, that you know the Respond was first founded. Uh, it was revamped last year by the Foster and Adoptive Care Coalition, but it was mm -hmm. first founded in the late '80s by um, an African American couple here, uh, Howard and Vicki Denson. And mm -hmm. they, when they founded uh, Respond, it, it was birthed out of their own process of of trying to work with different agencies to adopt. And so they they talk a lot about how they experience racial barriers. But again, it's, it was even back then, it was this unspoken racial sort of barrier where you would they would go to a certain to certain agencies and the agencies would just not even do their due diligence to um, vet them as potential foster parents. It would just they would kind of stonewall them. And so you see it's not and that's what and and that's well within the rights of adoption agencies. Right. So you know mm -hmm. they they don't have to work with anyone they don't want to technically. Um, and so like I said uh, there was this unspoken sense of like okay you don't want to work with us because we're black or we're African American so we'll mm -hmm. find somewhere else that another agency that will. We will leave it there for now. We've been talking with Lucretia Wembley with St. Louis Public Radio. You can see Lucretia's reports online and also on social media as well as streaming on the St. Louis Public Radio site. And you can see this report online at ky3.com on the KY3 News app, also Roku, Fire Stick, and Apple TV+. Plus. Lucretia, thanks very much. We look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, Steve.